Okay, welcome back to Coffee with Job. This is Wednesday morning, and we're going to look at verses 5 to 13 of chapter 26. And this is part of a mini-series within the Coffee with Job thing that we're looking at God's answer to COVID, cancer, and climate change. And here is a beautiful description of the sovereignty of God in creation and over the dead. Job 26, 5. The dead are in deep anguish, those beneath the waters and all that live in them. The realm of the dead is naked before God. Destruction lies uncovered. He spreads out the northern skies over empty space. He suspends the earth over nothing. He wraps up the waters in his clouds, yet the clouds do not burst under their weight. He covers the face of the full moon, spreading his clouds over it. He marks out the horizon on the face of the waters for a boundary between light and darkness. The pillars of the heavens quake, aghast at his rebuke. By his power he churned up the sea. By his wisdom he cut Rahab to pieces. By his breath the skies became fair. His hand pierced the gilded gliding serpent. Now, this is Job's homage to the wisdom and power of God. He refers to God's power and superiority and sovereignty over death, space, outer space, the earth, clouds, the waters, light, darkness, mountains, the sea, and the heavens. He speaks of God's knowledge, God's creative power and design, God's control, and God's all-powerful all supremacy. Verses 5 and 6, God's power over death and destruction. Uh, 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 it's just such a wonderful thing. Christ destroys death, the destroyer of death. Verse 7 is about creation and cosmology. Um, God is the one who can create by hanging the world from nothing. I have to say, in terms of the, the cosmology of the time, this is quite a revolutionary insight. This is just a brilliant cosmological passage, that one of the best in the whole Bible. The void comes from Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, without form, yet none of the creation language of Genesis 1 and 2 is used. He talks about building the pillars of, of heaven in verse uh, 11. Psalm 18, 7, the earth trembled and quake and the foundations of the mountain shook. They trembled because he was angry. There was a belief then the mountains held up the sky. He talks about marking out the horizon in a circle. There's a reference to the creation story of a victory over the monsters of chaos by God. That's a cosmology that's referred to in Psalm 74, verses 13 to 17, and Psalm 104, verses 1 to 9. These old myths, uh, some of the names are used from it, Ram for sea, Rahab, and especially the fleeing serpent. Sapon, the north, uh, Isaiah 14, verse 13, I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of the assembly on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. Now, don't be too concerned that this is taking us back to the creation myths of the Canaanites and Babylonians. Job's using these figures, it doesn't mean he believes their myths. What he's doing is actually celebrating God's victory over them. But he's, he's taking these snatches from old myths and poems, if you like, and helping to create a sense of wonder of the power of God over creation. And here's the, just the amazing thing, that this dealing with evil and sin requires a shaking of the created order. God is sovereign, but he's going to shake the created order as well. And that is in Romans 8, the creation subjected to frustration by God, waiting for salvation to come. So salvation... God's salvation of his people and God's sovereignty of creation go together. And I feel that in our current world, you know, God is using the creation to shake us, whether it's through a small virus, whether it's through earthquakes or a, a volcano in Indonesia just now, uh, whether it's through floods or bushfires or other things. Because verses 8 and 9 talk about the continuing power of God over creation. The world is not self-sustaining. It needs to be upheld by Christ. Colossians 1, 17, he's before all things and in him all things together. And I love Hebrews 1, 3, the sun is the radiance of God's glory. 
and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. So God is sovereign over creation, God brings salvation, and these two things are linked. And tomorrow, we're going to see how that wonderfully happens through the power of God. So God bless you. Uh, whatever you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, may you know the peace and the power of Christ. See you tomorrow. Bye.